Hey everybody, happy Saturday, it's Forex Brizio, it is uh, April 1st, 2023, no, not April Fool's here, and I uh, hope you're having a good weekend, it's uh, 6.30 p.m. here, and um, just making another video here, uh, so I made one yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before, I don't know, days blend together, using a 50 period moving average channel. And then a few days ago, or earlier in the week, or recently, I made one using uh, to talking about Heikinashi candles. And so uh, I'm going to kind of combine a little bit of both and uh, talk about a way that you can use Heikinashi candles uh, to find some really good trend entry trades uh, and even some counter trend moves that you can take um, within uh, you know a, a larger trend. And again, guys, there's always going to uh, involved using more than one time frame okay so whether you use the five minute or 15 minute for your entry with say a, a one to four hour um, analysis chart or or higher or what have you okay so um so basically what we've got on the uh, chart here is this moving average channel is actually a 20 period smma channel okay a 20 period smooth smooth moving average channel Okay, if I hover over this, you can see it says 20, and it is smooth. So, so that's what this channel is. And I, I dropped it from 20 to 50, uh, from 50 to 20, because I felt like the 50 was good, uh, but it was a little bit slow. And I feel with the 20 that as long as you're using the higher time frame for your analysis, for your confirmation, that you can, uh, th this is still sufficiently long enough to to uh, smooth out a lot of the noise and make sure you don't get into uh, you know something bad. Okay, so um, we'll just kind of do a couple of charts here and, and just play around. Now, so here's here's an example right here. This is the Euro Aussie four hour chart. You can see we're in an uptrend. We're using the the moving average channel clearly direct an uptrend. We had this pullback right here, and the re-entry point for this uh, for for this particular trade would be this candle right here, and I'll try to zoom a little bit here. Uh, it's this one right here. Okay, and you can see we had these red corrective candles right into the channel. We had a lot of indecision candles, at least two in a row here, and indecision bullish candles. So we would not take the re-entry on this candle because you can see there's a wick um, at both ends here, Okay, which, which represents a little indecision. Now right here, We've got this uh, candle that closes not only outside of the channel, but you can see there's no lower wick. So that show, tells you that this is strong bullish momentum to the upside. Okay. Now these are Heikinashi candles, so you're always going to see a wick in in uh, at least one direction. But when you don't see, in the case of an uptrend, if you don't see a lower shadow, a lower wick, that means you have very strong buying action. So this would have been your re-entry. Of course, you could have taken any of these. But th this is your re-entry point. So it just gives you a nice clean view of, of the correction, okay, that you can use. All right, so let me zoom back out here. And I want to show you, uh, let me look at Euro Yen. Okay. Now on Euro Yen, oops, I got to change my temple here, guys. Okay. So Euro Yen, you can see here, uh, we're, we're in an uptrend, okay, on the four hour chart. Now we currently have this correction going on here, and this is what I want to focus on. Okay, if we go to the one hour chart, you can see we've now broken through the channel on the one hour chart, okay? You see we have this little correction here, one, you know, these couple of small candles broke and then went back up here, we closed right inside the channel, went up. Now this, this close now here is a little bit more aggressive. Okay, but if you're using the higher time frame, you go to the four hour and you're like, well, it's still in an uptrend. We still have the moving average channel pointing up here. Okay, so one thing you can do, if you go back to the one hour and we see again these strong Heikinashi candles to the downside, really any of these, you can see there's no upper wicks indicating strong selling pressure really from, you know, all, any of these really right right through here. 
But if you wait for it to get out of the channel or get one to close outside the channel, so either let's say any of these three would be good candles to enter on. Now you're saying, well, it's still technically a counter trend trade based on the four hour chart. So what you could do is you could go to the four hour and you could use your moving average channel to kind of estimate about maybe where you would take this trade if you were going to take a short. Let's say, you know, you wanted to trade it maybe halfway in between the, this channel. So maybe something like right here, you could trade this back to. You can see this also is maybe a, a previous support area here. And if we measure this out, it's about uh, it's about 90 pips. So, I mean, it's not bad. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's a four-hour chart. It's 90 pips. So if we go back to the one hour, we theoretically could take a short position here, trade this all the way back, okay, all the way back to, to this area, and then then we could see what happens. Now, the nice thing about Heikinashi candles is because they um, they kind of smooth out some noise. They're kind of taking an average of the last of the current and the last candle. If price comes down to this line right here and then blows right through it with another strong red Heikinashi candle, well then there's no need to exit the trade just because it comes to here and say, well, this is hitting the four hour channel here, I'm going to get out. Unless you see like a strong blue Heikinashi candle form right in this area somewhere, if, the, if this just goes right through here and we see a nice strong red Heikinashi candle pop right through this level, there's no reason to exit, okay? But at least for the short term, if you wanted to take this trade, and this actually could be a current trade, I mean the market's closed right now, and I wouldn't re enter at, right at the open tomorrow night, but you know, depending how things play out here, uh, this, you know, could be a trade. So this is a an example of using Heikinashi in a counter trend situation. And then when you want to figure out where to exit that trade, you would want to go back and look at the higher time frame uh, and, you know, use your moving average channel or where price has gone before in that trend as a potential area um, to go back to. Okay. So that's a counter trend trade. Uh, okay, so I want to show you this one because this is similar, but I want to show you why I would not take this one. So here's the pound US dollar. Let's go to the one hour. You can see on the one hour, we, we um, and you can see I took a trade here last week, which I've closed now, obviously. Um, but so you can see this is very similar to what we were just looking at at the last chart, where price has come down and is now broken out of the, out of the channel on the one hour chart, certainly more aggressively than it did here or back here. But the reason why I wouldn't take this right now is because if now if we pop out to the four hour, you can see we've come right to the moving average. We're already sitting on top of this moving average channel on the four hour chart, okay? Like we did here, and then we came here, and we had this tap here and here. So to me, this is not worth the risk because this could just, you know, right from here, could just, you know, come down here and then bounce. Uh, or it could come down a little bit more. Maybe it comes back inside the channel, but that's not very far. I mean, this is only, you know, the middle of the channel is only about 12 pips and maybe 20, 20, uh, 28 to 30 pips to the bottom of the channel. Now, you might be okay with that, but it might not even do that, okay? So this is one, unlike the last one I showed you, where there was still room between that red candle and the channel where you could trade it down, you know, to fill that space. Here we're already sitting on top. So this one I would not take the short. I would what I would do on this one is I would just wait and see what happens, uh, and I would look for maybe bullish price action uh, back up again to resume this four-hour uptrend, or on the four-hour chart I'd wait until we got a close, you know, somewhere down here below the channel, and then maybe there's a new downtrend for me. Okay. So this is why even though you've got this, you know, this no sh upper wick. Uh, Heikinashi candle right here. Why well, I wouldn't take the shorts because it's already sitting on top of the channel. Okay, so that's a counter trend trade I would not take because until this thing proves otherwise, it is still in an uptrend. Okay, regardless of what it's doing right at the moment. Okay, but the Heikinashi candles make it really kind of simple to see that. Uh, let's look at uh, something else. Okay, CAD Swiss. You can see I was drawing around in this chart yesterday. So we have this uptrend. Now we're kind of chopping around, consolidating. Okay, and I don't trade when price is tr is either trading inside the channel, okay, and moving sideways like this. I don't, I'm gonna have no interest in this. 
and even this kind of whip sawing here back up back down I mean so I'm kind of looking at this as kind of a structure break um, and so we do have this uh, the market closed with this uh, Heike and Ashy candle right here with no lower wick okay I'd still like to see a break but the CAD Swiss I'm generally looking for longs okay and I think that's also confirmed on the four hour all right uh, GJ I think is similar to what we were just talking about is this the one I just showed you I don't know so here's GJ and again four hour chart okay one hour chart we've got this break you can see I've got this arrow drawn here okay four hour chart we've got you know room to the downside here back to the moving average channel this is a lot more I mean this is anywhere from 65 to 140 pips between the top and lower edge of this channel so there's an opportunity here on the one hour chart maybe down to the 15 to trade this on pullback so here's the 15 minute you can see we already have been have moved quite a bit but I think it has more room to go I, I'd probably like to see a little pullback here and then see this thing drop and my target on this since again it's still counter trend off the four hour uh, chart I'd be looking for you know red hike and ashy candles taking me down back towards this channel and then from that point uh, like I said before I would either you know trail stop or you know exit if I saw a, a you know a bullish blue Heikinashi candle uh, but like I said it could just blow right through here in which case we could have a new downtrend and then you just hold it okay but the Heikinashi candles really kind of give you a much cleaner look whereas we use candlesticks for this type of analysis you know you're going to see a lot of red and you know red and blue or whatever color scheme you use for bullish and bearish intermixed here and it can be kind of hard it can give you a little analysis paralysis and hesitation where the Heiken Ashi candles really kind of you know smooth this out a little bit all right um, CAD yen I think it's like the same as CAD Swiss okay four hour chart we're in an uptrend one hour chart we are sitting right at here so uh, th so this is one where if we get a break below here uh, on the one hour chart this could be another thing where we trade back to the you know back down uh, towards the channel on the four hour chart but right now and it doesn't look like we're doing that we're just we, we've pulled right back into the channel so my bias on this is still that you know it'll consolidate here and then it'll form a, a bullish Heikinashi Heikinashi uh, candle and this thing will pop back out of here but if it does break lower with more red candles I'll do the same thing I was talking about on on uh, on uh, GJ I would trade this you know back towards this channel and you got a little bit a lot of room to run here I mean you've got based on where the moving average is sitting right now you've got anywhere from 75 to 125 pips to the downside and this uptrend would still be intact okay so again use the Heiken Ashi candles to help you figure that out and again it just smooths out the noise and then if you want to do this on the one hour chart in terms of either re-entering the long or uh, potentially picking up a short uh, back to this four hour support level you know again use the 15 minute chart um, use the 15 minute chart to push out you can see I still have my regular candlesticks on the 15 but you want to use your your um, lower time frame to fine-tune your entry if you want okay but use the you know the one hour and the four hour for your, kind of your analysis if you really want to fine tune it you could go drop to the five minute I don't really find that to be necessary I think the 15 is plenty low enough okay and um, what other ones can I show you here uh, this is dollar yen uh, so again we're in a, this is the four hour chart we're in an uptrend okay we've now well we were in this downtrend now it looks like we've broken out we've we've taken out the this swing this swing so I'm looking at this as potentially up, although the dollar fundamentally is weak. So dollar yen is not my favorite one to trade to the upside like this. But let's just look at the price action, and if we get a uh, a, tr uh, a a move back above uh, from about where it is now, we see you know a blue Heikinashi strong no no lower shadow form here. That's a great entry. You could look for it maybe down on the 15. Uh, which I'm not going to do because I don't have the Heiken Ashi drawn on there and again um, this is one I probably would not take a counter trend trade because you can see we're very close to the moving average channel so on the one hour chart I, I probably would not take uh, a counter trend trade 
if we draw a little horizontal line, maybe like something like this, back to the one hour, you can see we don't really have a lot of room to play here. But if it comes down and it blows right through here, and suggesting that the downtrend is going to take over, well, then I might start looking for shorts. But for now, again, on the four hour, we're pretty close. There is a little bit of room here. I mean, I guess you could take it. I mean, this is, you know, 40, 45, 45, 50 pips away, back down to here. You certainly could do that. I'm not telling you not to. But there isn't a lot of headroom. But if you wanted to fine tune an entry here on the 15 or uh, on the uh, one hour chart and just look for this to continue to drop back down here, okay, back into this area, then that's a possibility. Okay. But again, you're using the higher time frame to kind of look at where your um, look at where price is and determine whether you want to trade it long, short, or you know just stand aside if it's consolidating, etc. Um, Aussie dollar is an uh, example of a pair I'm not interested in trading. This is the four-hour chart of the Aussie dollar. You can see price is moving inside the channel or just on either side of it. You can you know I drew this box to pick up the high, the recent high and recent low. And you can see this is not, I'm not interested in this. Okay, even on a shorter time frame, I'm not interested in this. So we we're coming out of this big downtrend. So we'll see what happens next, whether this starts to, this is an accumulation zone and we start to break up. You know, if we take out this high up here and the moving averages start to turn, well, then it'll be time to start looking for longs. Okay, but this is an example where you can use the moving average channel to say, you know what, this is consolidating. It's clearly moving sideways. You see price trading heavily inside the channel. The channel actually gets a little bit wider when it's consolidating. And uh, you see price go, you know, in and out of it. You know, out of it here, back out, back in, back out, back in, back out, back in, back out, back in. Right? It's just, it's just not getting anywhere. Okay? So this is an example of a pair that I am not interested in. Not that I won't look at it, but very quickly I can just say, nope, this is trading in a range. I'm not interested. Okay? So, so that that's that one. Um, euro dollar. I think this potential continuation trade on the one hour. So here's the euro on the one hour chart. If we go out to the four. Okay, so on the four, this is interesting on the four because we have traded back to the um, to the top of the moving average channel on this retracement. So based on that, I wouldn't take a short right here. But the only reason why I'm thinking about it is because, and I'm not a huge double top, double bottom type thing, but you can see we've got this this uh, big double top here on the four hour that that price did reject off of. So I'd be curious to see how far it goes. Now on the one hour, uh, we did trade out of this box on the one hour, okay, and we are moving down. But because uh, we are technically still in an uptrend on the four hour, uh, I'm not really thrilled, but because of the double top, I might actually consider taking shorts here on pullbacks and, you know, maybe trading it, looking at maybe targeting back to these lows. So I do have this, you know, as a potential sell on pullbacks. Um, and uh, obviously, if on the four hour chart, if we make headway and we get outside this channel, we get one of these Heikinashi candles, bearish candles to close below this channel, then that definitely would set up the, the short. But in the meantime, there could be some some um, some room for it to move a little bit here. Okay, but again, uh, normally I probably wouldn't take this if if it wasn't for this this double top setting up here. All right, um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm just gonna leave it right there because uh, it's kind of the same thing elsewhere. Four hour chart. So here's the pound Canadian. I'll just do this last one. So this one's definitely heading down, in my opinion. This is the four hour chart. You can see we were in an uptrend. We've kind of rolled over now. We had price breakthrough, come back, retest, break. And we had this big bearish engulfing uh, Heikinashi candle. No wick to the upside, okay? Pushing down. So on the one hour chart, you can see we, you know, obviously a great entry would have been somewhere back here. But I think this has got a lot of room to go. So I'll be looking for pullbacks. Probably on a 15-minute chart down to here. Look for some pullbacks towards the moving averages as they come down, and then look to continue to short this. Okay, but you can see very clearly that this thing wants to come down. You know, we we went up, we've rolled over, broke through, came back, broke through again, and this is the pound CAD. You know, we looked at the CAD yen and CAD Swiss already, which look like they want to go up. 
So if it is the Canadian that's driving this, that would confirm those that CAD Swiss and CAD Yen trades too, uh, to be bullish on those and bearish on this one. Okay? So again, guys, there's nothing that you can't do these with candlestick charts, but the Heiken actually really smooths it out. You get that those no those no uh the no wicks in the op, you know, um, so in a in a bearish trend, you want to see no wicks on the top side of the candle, and in a bullish trend, you don't want to see any wicks on the bottom side. Okay, you, the only time you, you just should see wicks in the direction of the trend, and that's just the way the Heikinashis are are calculated. Okay, but you don't want to see, you know, like I wouldn't have taken this short on this candle here because we had this upper wick right here, which is kind of an indecision candle, and you know. In hindsight, this could have gone up, but this one for sure, this would have been an entry. Okay, now this is the end of the day Friday, so you have to take that with a little grain of salt. But I do think this will be coming down. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there, guys. And uh, again, uh, my favorite pair set of time frames for this entire strategy, as you saw from what we just did, is the one to four hour for your analysis. Okay. And uh, with a fine-tuning entry on probably the 15-minute chart, okay. You could also use the one hour as your as your entry time frame too, um, if you want to be a little bit more patient and really let things confirm out. But uh, the 15-minute chart is a good good choice for a um, for a confirmation entry too, okay. But the one to one hour and the four hour is where I'm doing analysis. And again, uh, if I see a potential setup on the one hour, I'm going to flip to the four hour. And if it's a counter trend trade on the four hour chart, then I want to see where the um, price is in relation to the channel on the four hour chart, like what we saw with with uh, GJ, right? So this is an opportunity. The one hour chart again. This what I showed you before breakthrough. So potential short. On the four-hour chart, we are technically still in an uptrend, but we have room to fall back towards this moving average channel, which does act as a nice support, uh, dynamic uh, area of support. And so that would be my target. And then if it blows through here, then obviously, you know, as long as you're seeing red Heikinashi candles pointing down or just little blue indecision candles, uh, which just suggests corrective moves. So even if you see a blue candle, if it's an indecision candle where it's got wicks on both sides, you know, I would ignore those, and you just keep trading it until you see some evidence that it's going to go back up. Okay, so that's all you do, and that's why I use the Heikinashi candles because they'll take some of that noise out. They'll help you. I think the really nice thing about Heikinashi candles is once you get used to seeing them and trusting them, they can help keep you in trades much longer than a candlestick chart, where you're going to see a lot more bullish and bearish candles mixed together and in real time. It might scare you out of a trade. I mean, if you just look at this up move right here, I mean, this whole move up here was all blue candles except this one little red one. And this certainly wouldn't have chased you out. This is just a little tiny indecision Heikinashi candle, a wick on both sides, very small body. This is nothing. In fact, if anything, if you were in this trade, you could have added to your position right here on this little pause, and that's it. Okay? So, um, so anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, any questions, comments, please leave them down below. And if you smash that like button, it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're just finding the channel, uh, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell notification below the video so you get notified when I post new content. And again, guys, questions, comments, drop them down below. I do answer everything. Uh, legit questions anyways. And that's it. All right, guys, have a good rest of your weekend, and we'll follow up with us uh, on all this next week. Thanks.